going to pray for us. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for today. Crazy day, but I know you're in control. You're a blessing to us because of the gift you have given us, the salvation you have given us, the love that you gave us that we didn't serve, but you still gave it to us because you really loved us. You loved us before we loved you. I ask you to bless everyone here, everyone who's watching. May everything be smooth. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Today is a new chapter. God's plan of salvation. We already experienced his love and his salvation. We already had that. Each one of us here already confessed of our sin. Lord, forgive me. We have done that. Can you hear me when this is down here? in the beginning of time. We look at the book of Genesis. God made the earth, the animal, the sea, the light and darkness. He created it all. He had a plan. He already had a plan in the future. He is God. He's all-knowing. Things don't surprise him. What you and me do doesn't surprise him. He knew. He knows the future. He knows who will be saved. And he knows who will not be saved. But God gives everyone the chance, no matter what, for salvation. He knew sin would come into the world. He didn't want robots. I mean, it's nice to have someone that listens to every command. It'd be cool. Make me dinner tonight. Now, I want this. Wash my clothes. Command, command, command. He does not like that. When my wife makes me dinner, she makes it out of love. Because she doesn't want to see me skinny. She makes dinner out of love. I do things for her out of love. I show her my love. If she asks me to do something, clean the garage. I will clean it maybe in 10 months, maybe. Eventually, I will clean it. But I do. I love her. And for God, his plan for salvation. There are seven facts of salvation. Facts. As we study and we go on, study about the different facts. I will list the seven, but focus on the first one today. Salvation was not man's plan. No. It was God's plan. If it was our plan, we would mess up for sure. Planning has to be perfect. By a perfect person with no error. We are full of errors sometimes. We make mistakes. But already set apart from him because of sin. It is our choice. Then there's no other way 
you could be safe in one way. Acts chapter 4, verse 12 shows this. There is no salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven which we say. That verse tells you that. Who's the name you can be saved in? Jesus Christ. Right? Now, to Billy Graham. You know who? Billy Graham. Now, to Joseph Smith. Now, to the Pope. No name. You'll see more verses. That's the fourth time. Yeah. Next, I want to show you the seven facts. Number one, God loves you. Of course, right. His love is unique. His love is awesome. More than we can understand. Our love here is limited. When you look at yourself, you can tell our love goes up and down, up and down, up and down. I feel like I love my wife this much today. She missed the spot I already missed, so my love is less. kids, when I'm angry at them, sometimes they feel the love. It goes up and down, but God's love remains the same. It's extraordinary. Extraordinary. It's a different love. He loves us no matter what. Whatever we do, he loves us. Number two, that you and me are sinners. We already know that. How many of you did not lie today? Can you remember? I can't remember. Sometimes we forget. How many of, how many of you didn't get angry today? Inside, I was very angry with my tech. Ah, but I control myself. We make mistakes. When we acknowledge that we are sinners, I'm telling God, I know I'm a sinner, I need you. Number three, we were dead in sin. When we sin, Apart from God, do we know how to connect with them to Jesus Christ? Or, Jesus Christ died for you already about 2,000 years ago. He already died. The faith is in the person, the only person, but God. So, number five. You can't be saved by faith in him, Jesus Christ. Number six, you can't be saved in nowhere. Seven, after you say you are a child of God. That's what we have to remember. We are a child of God. We make mistakes. Satan will pick on you. Ah, oh, you sinned. God doesn't love you anymore. You're too late. Satan will pick you. Even people will tell you that sometimes. But his love is still remains for you. He loves you. He wants you to repent. Continue on him. Now back to the way. All religions do not lead. To God and salvation. 
there is only one way. It's in God's way. And God's way to a person, the Son, Jesus Christ. Christianity does not save you. Catholicism does not save you. Mormonism doesn't save you. So, what saves you? Jesus Christ, His blood. I met many people who say, I am a Christian. Cool, me too. I'm a Christian too. How are you saved? I go to church every Sunday. And I go to church every Sunday. You're saved by going to church. Yeah. Oh. Based based on I give my tithes and offerings. I give twelve percent. Ooh, now you're really getting into heaven. No, sorry. Does she have a question? Last week, last Friday, I went to Irvine Starbucks. I saw people fellowshipping, Mormon, Jehovah's Witnesses, not religious, Christianity and all. Mm -hmm. with me. Yeah, we go to places, we see people. You know, they have the different groups. I watch, I see them. You must go to church. You must give. Or you must put your faith in a person. Yeah, that's true, see. Just saying I am a Christian, the label. But how do you really live? When people come, you're a Christian? You're saved because you're a Christian? What are you going to say? No, I'm not saved because I am a Christian. I'm not saved because I'm a pastor. You're a pastor. Oh, you're going to heaven for sure. I'm not going to heaven because I am a pastor. The label. I'm going to heaven because of Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through Jesus. Yes, I am a pastor, but I'm going to heaven because of Jesus. Because of him. He died on the cross. His blood was shed. The righteous blood. The blood that washes my sins away. That's why I'm going to heaven. Because I believe that Jesus died. And I put my faith in Jesus. My salvation is in him. Alone. Not what I do here. Not what you do here. You guys do many wonderful things in the church. I thank you for that. It's a blessing. You're not saved because of that. You do it because you believe in him and love him. I'm here because I love him. I do it because of him. Because of Jesus. That's what we have to remember. We will meet people. They'll say, I go to church. I will go to heaven because of that. It's our job to let them know. And then uh, let's show you John 14.6. John, what, 3.16. For God so loved the world. He gave his only son. Now who, what, believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Good. You remember that. That's the best thing about it because I know I make mistakes. In yourself, know yourself. That I cannot earn my way into heaven. If I went to church every day, prayed, done good, 
I would not be able to meet his criteria to go into heaven. Do you know his criteria to get into heaven? If without Jesus, you must be pure with no sin. Not one sin. That would be the criteria. Requirement. I thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the gift. Yes, thank you. I depend on Jesus' the blood to wash my sins away. God, salvation is three fold. How will Jesus came, he left heaven. Can you imagine what heaven probably be like? Maybe you could think, no pain, all the food you could eat, fresh fruit, the purest water, just like no pain in him. But he left, come. He was willing, because he loved us. He came to take our place. When we face God, Jesus will take our place if we believe in Jesus and we accept him as our Savior. When we face God, Jesus will say, Yes, I know him or her. Gary knows words. We will hear those words. Yes, I know that person. I know your name. Yes. You don't want to hear. I don't know who that person is. That's scared. But I'm not scared because I already know my name is in the book of life. And you as well should know your name is in the book of life. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 26. If it had been necessary, Christ would have to die again and again ever since the world began. But now, once for all time, he has appeared at the end of the age to remove sin by his own death. that wants to pay for it all. Pay for it. Finish. Before Jesus Christ, he had to sacrifice an animal every year for the sins. Sometimes I wonder, why did you wait so long, Lord? That'd be a good question to ask God. I know his timing is right. He has a reason, and I trust in him. He has a reason, he has his plan, and he sets it all up. There's no mistake. Second, he is a pure in heaven, the presence of God. After his resurrection, the power to save from sin. When Jesus died for three days, what did he do? Sleep? Say he went down and took the keys from Satan. Three days, took the keys. Must have been a long journey. Better than the hobbits. The long journey took like three long movies to complete that one. 
that. I'm wondering too. Three days, same idea. He went through like a piece. Death. The second death has no control over us anymore. We put our faith in Jesus. Sin used to control you. You used to be like, hey, you sin all the time. You feel nothing that they feel. But after you are saved, you realize uh, you don't have to bondage anymore. You're free. You can leave and escape and grow. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24. Jesus is on earth. He did not enter into a holy place made with human hands. Have any of you ever touched the temple in Jerusalem before? Not yet? Finish? Would like to? I would like to go and see. Can you imagine what the temple looked like before it went down? You read the Bible, King Solomon's temple. One of the most beautiful places. He made it. But it was human hands that made it. It was a copy of the true one in heaven. But Jesus, when he died, he entered into a temple to be with God on our power. He had. So we're not facing God alone. We have Jesus with us. That's why it says, I know who the person is. I know you, 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 you. On your behalf. He helps you. You're not alone. come back one day, establish his temple again one day in the future. When? It's his timing. We just trust in him. Get a letter for us. First John chapter 2, verse 1 through 2. My dear children, I'm writing this to you so you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we'll have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who's truly righteous, true. He knows the flesh. Since Jesus lived as human, he knows the temptation. He experienced what we experience. Jesus would go to the Father. But why do you think he has to do that? Satan said, hey, Joe, we messed up. We messed up. Jesus went, I died for his sins. I washed his sins away. You see, he repented from his he said he was sorry. I finished one. Bye bye. Go away. Verse 2. He himself is a sacrifice that's already atoned for our sins. Not only our sins, but since the whole world. One person, Jesus Christ, paid up for the whole world. I wonder how many people that would be. So right now we have seven, about seven billion people on earth right now. 
but that's just now. But we're about the past. We're about the future. Babies are being born every day. And people die every day. He died for everyone. Everyone has the opportunity for salvation. I already said the third one. Here are up here. The second half. He will come as a king of kings, Lord of lords. He'll come and take control. He died in the past. The first time he came to wash his sins away. That was his purpose. Second purpose. It'll be time for sin to be finished. Judgment. not here yet, but he's waiting for every person to be saved. He knows who will be saved. God knows one person will be saved tomorrow. He will wait. That's his love. We'll be like, for well, one person? Come now. There. He said he doesn't want anyone to perish. He desires everyone to be saved. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28. So Christ was offered once in all time to take away the sins of many people. He will come again, not to deal with our sin, but to bring salvation to all those who are waiting for him. He will come to bring salvation. We are waiting for him. We are waiting for him, right? To come back or we go. We are waiting for him. Some have to wait for a long time. My faith. Finally, on the first fact that God loves you. John 3.16, the most famous verse of all. That every child in Sunday school should know. Every person here should know that too. For God. For this is how God loved the world. He sent his only son. Who believes in him? I know we hear that so many times, but it's a poem first that needs to be in our mind, in the hearts, that we remember, to believe, faith, the basis of our salvation, faith in Him is what saved us. So we will have righteousness that comes in us. We are righteous through who? Jesus Christ. We are made right because of him. Hmm. Things we need to know. Number one, God. James 5 or 16. How important righteousness is. The next verse I'll show you. Why is that? Two. You can exchange your sin for his righteousness. Why? Because of 
he loves you. Forgive me for my sins. Take it all. Wash it away. Let me be in my church with him. It's a simple exchange. It's like giving a dollar, four quarters. It's that simple. James chapter 5, verse 16. Therefore, confess your sins to one each other and pray for each other that you may be healed. The, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Not powerful ones in the righteous man. When we pray to him, if we're not living right, the prayer is But it's a different thing when you're praying for salvation. Forgive me. He hears us. So if you're playing around with sin, someone says, pray for me, please. You know inside, like, you're stuck. Oh, okay. I'm going to pray for you. Ah. But that righteousness is important. So we need to pray for each other. That's why we pray for each other every Tuesday here. Heart. Be like, oh no, it's Tuesday. We're going to pray, so I better be righteous that day. I hope your thoughts are not like that. I hope it's every day I'm going to be righteous every day. I'm going to work and be righteous. It's important. Calvary is proof that God loves and wants to save me. What is It's also known as Golgotha. It's where Jesus was crucified on the hill on the cross. That's what it's called Calvary. Jesus was willing to let and take him on the cross because he knew that that's what it cost for us to be saved. Jesus could have been like, hey, no way. Angels, come. Destroy the Romans. Destroy the Jewish. I don't want to do that. He had that power. He could have. But he followed God's will. Why? Because he loved you. That's the proof. He loved you. If you have the powers of the X-Men, let's say Wolverine, you know, the claws, is someone trying to take you, put you in a fire, or crucify you? You fight that fight. <coughs> right? But Jesus had the power. He was willing. He loved you. Take you. Force him. Beat him up. The passion of Christ is a good picture. accepted him. That's true love. If someone came to me and said, I'm going to beat you up if you don't want, or beat your wife up. Take my wife. No. I say, take me. have a job as a shepherd. So give up for your sheep. You're my sheep. So I know I have a job here. I just want to give up my life for you. Because you're my sheep. And I would. Lord, don't let that happen, please. I just let him know. love that God gave us too. So much love. Hebrews, the last verse. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 20. 
So Christ was offered once for all time as a sacrifice to take away the sin of many people. He will come again. Not to deal with the sin, but to bring salvation to all who wait for him. I feel like I said that first three times, right? No problem. You get the status. He's already paid the price because of his love, his love. That's how much he loves you. We should thank him every day. Tell him thank you right now because of his love. Gave up for you. He gave up his body. He gave up heaven to come. He suffered the pain of love. That's true love. 